السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين So inshallah continuing the various elements of the heart of the qalb Today we have الأمل وطول الأمل which is false hope and this is something which we have been discouraged by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what is meant by false hope is to have long aspirations and dreams and there's nothing wrong to have goals and aspirations of course but to have such specific goals that and aspirations with so much detail and oh, I'm going to get so and so and when I get such and such then I'm going to do such and such and such and such and such and such that it distracts you from reality it distracts you from the inevitability inevitability of death and that death can come at any time and it distracts you from that to such an extent where you start sacrificing your sharia your deen your salah your zakah because of these long long aspirations and hopes and false hopes that you have once again you know it's not to confuse this for having an ambition having dreams of course everyone should have dreams and ambitions and you should work behind those goals but all the while remembering that death can come to me at any time how much have i prepared for that what what is the purpose of my life how much have i prepared for that how much have i fulfilled that subhanallah so false hope al amal extended false hope tatwil al amal is peculiar is a peculiar phenomenon for many people it is an ever present part of their psyche a kind of everyday assurance that death for them is a long way away at the same time however in a heartbeat it can act on an individual like a quick acting poison to inspire immoral behavior or at the very least an inclination towards material possessions over and above any spiritual concerns it is a mental environment that leads people to live their lives as if a long life is guaranteed this delusion can generate hard heartedness and inaction due to the heedlessness of the hereafter subhanallah a person is then he reaches a state where he's not affected by the verses of the quran speaking about jannah about jahannam because those seem so far away right so unrelatable right, to a person's life because he's so much involved in this this amal and this false hope right, subhanallah allah saves us from such a condition another kind of hope is having hope but neglecting the means to achieve what one hopes for which is often referred to as an empty wish one hopes to become healthier for example but remains idle and is altogether carelessness careless about diet right, subhanallah right, so even if when you do have a goal and an ambition right, then strive behind that goal and ambition take the required steps right, this is darul asbab right, we know from our deen right, this that our belief is that this is darul asbab a world of means and they say in arabic right, that take the means right, as as if they are everything and then leave them and do tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they are nothing, subhanAllah. So we take every step, right? so for example, you wor- worried about your health, right? so let's look at a diet plan, let's look at exercise, let's look at the various right, ways that I can work on my health, which is amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now how can I protect this? Instead of just having hopes right, and dreams, daydreaming all day, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but not actually doing anything. Subhanallah. The cause of extended false hope may be due to a heedlessness of the reality of death, a lack of certainty in the hereafter, a negative understanding of the re- reality of Allah and His authority and presence, ignorance of the fact that the entire affair of this life is Allah's alone, that everything belongs to Allah Azza wa An enduring characteristic of the teaching of every prophet and thus every revealed religion is the idea that in entry into paradise is a matter of Allah's mercy. The reward of this eternal abode comes by combining faith with sincere de- deeds and confirm one's profession of faith. It is a misguided extension of false hope. However, that will exclude many from paradise. Many a soul that vouches for Islam will find itself cast into hell on a day of judgment. Allah subhanahu, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. So now let's look at some, inshallah, signs and symptoms of tulul amal and false hope indifference laziness and neglecting obligatory duties 
Right? So something is obligatory upon you, but you neglect it right? because of your false hope and your tulul amal. You show hard hearted heartedness and laziness, or kasl, right? which is laziness, right? sloth, regarding matters of the hereafter. Subhanallah. So when it comes to the matters of the hereafter, right? when it comes to matters of the dunya, you might be really energetic, right? you really ambitious, really passionate. But when it comes to the akhirah, then it becomes like a second thing. Right? You find it a burden. You find it a burden on your soul. Right? Subhanallah. You believe that you will live for a long time. So you do not attend, you do not attach much, if any importance, to pondering over your mortality. Right? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Akthir hadhi min ladhat. Right? Akthir hadhi min ladhat. That make, think a lot, or very often, about the breaker of all desires, all ambitions. Right? And what is that? That is death. Right? Subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us to think about death often. Right? That we are mortal, we are going to come to an end. Right? Why? Because that continues to motivate you to work for the akhirah. Right, to work for the afterlife, right? And it doesn't, it doesn't give you the, your, it doesn't make your worldly ambitions, which are permissible to have, right, the importance that is equivalent or more so than the ambitions of the akhirah. Right, subhanallah. You demonstrate an indifference, reluctance, or laziness towards fulfilling the obligatory acts of worship and other religious dictates. Right, you stop. Salah is not is is easy for you to miss salah. Right? Why? Because it's not a step towards this. Hope that you have, this false hope that you have, this worldly desire that you have. Right? You find reservoirs of energy when it comes to worldly matters, but are overcome with laziness when it comes to matters of the hereafter. You find excuses for neglecting prayer, salah, the foundation of spirituality, claiming that you are exhausted from the day's work. Right? Subhanallah. Right? You hope for the hereafter, but do nothing for it in terms of conduct and mortality. Right? Subhanallah. You know, on the topic of salah. You know, some individuals uh, in this masjid, actually, right, many times I've been asked this question. And inshallah, it comes from a, from, from a pure place. Right? I, I think it to come from a pure place. But the question in its nature right, was shocking for me. Right? And the question was, that, you know, I'm, I'm working as a taxi driver. Right? And, the, and not to, you know, shame any taxi drivers. It, there was a few of them who, who, who asked me this. Right? Can we pray salah in the car? SubhanAllah. While we're just traveling. Subhanallah. So you're willing to stop, stop. If you are hungry, you would stop at home, right? Go inside your house, right? Get your microwave. If you needed to visit the bathroom, right? Any of your needs, your worldly necessities and needs, you would easily stop your car and jump out of your car and go to the shop or you know wherever. Subhanallah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made the world a pure place for us. There's so many places you can stop and perform salah. It doesn't take long. Subhanallah. It's the same similar question to go traveling on the motorway. Our brother, where do we stop? And you know, Subhanallah, kids they never lie, right? So kids they actually tell me, oh, our father just stops on the hard shoulder and then they pray salah in the car, right? Subhanallah. Right? We live in a country where it's peppered right? with service stations every 20 miles. Can't you stop on a service station? I've stopped on a service station many times, right? In the corner, right? In a nice, soft, quiet spot, pray your salah, worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It's, it's the, the matter is, how much importance am I giving the akhirah, the afterlife? That's what it boils down to. Right? Which, what do I give preference to? What people think about me? Right? My achieving of my dunya? Yes, when I stop for salah, I'm going to lose more time. Right? So maybe I lose some sales. Maybe it's, you know, it's a, a busy time and I am lose, lose you know, taxi riders. Right? Subhanallah. So do I give that importance or my salah importance? Right? Or the hereafter importance? Subhanallah. You hope for the hereafter, but do nothing for it in terms of conduct and morality. Right? So you think, you know, inshallah, I'll get Jannah. Right? But you don't do anything for Jannah. Right? Subhanallah. As the Prophet ﷺ says in the, in the hadith, Ala inna sil'atullahi la ghaliyah. Right? Verily, the asset of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expensive. Right? Subhanallah. Ala inna sil'atullahi la jannah. Right? Verily, the asset of Allah, what is he talking about? Is Jannah. Subhanallah, we need to work for Jannah. Yes, nobody enters Jannah through their actions. They, they, they enter through the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how are you going to attract the mercy of Allah? It's through our actions, right? through our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All you have to show for your religiosity is the mere declaration of faith, a testimony unconfirmed by deeds, deeds especially the obligatory rites of worship and charitable acts towards others. Right? This is the simple... Uh, you know, mindset that don't judge me, brother. I say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm a Muslim. I don't need to pray salah. I don't need to give zakah. I don't judge me. You're not here to judge. Wallahi, I'm not here to judge you. But if you say with your lisan 
that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you accept Allah as your Lord, then how, how can your actions go against that? Right? And you do what you desire. That means your, your, your Lord is not your God, is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is yourself. Right? Subhanallah. Superstitions, and this is a very important one, inshallah, it's almost finished. Right? Superstitions. Right? You have a near paranoid concern with superstition. Right? Something that Allahu Akbar, you know, even though we live in a world of you know, science and logic or claim to be science and logic, right, it's something that many people are involved in. Right? They won't even date people or they won't even go out with people if they don't match the same signs, right? uh, you know, in terms of superstition. They don't have the same signs. Right? They won't work with those people. They make so many decisions in their life right, based on you know, their, their sign or whatever. Right? Subhanallah, their, um, their superstitious uh, beliefs. Right? You hear uh, you, yeah, in the feeling that something bad will happen, right? exemplified by the following behavior. Right? Number one, you avoid walking under any ladders. Right? You stay clear of black cats. You associate the number 13 with bad luck. You support the stigma attached to breaking a mirror. You knock on wood to avoid bad luck. Right? All such things. Right? Or checking the newspaper, right? what is your sign? Right? What is the fortune for you? What's going to happen to you? Right? Based on your signs, right? you get zoadic signs. Right? Based on your sign, they tell you, oh, today you're going to be successful, or today you're going to be unsuccessful, or today you're going to get into an argument, and then you become very paranoid. Right? Allahu Akbar. Then that's what will probably going to happen. Right? You're going to become paranoid, and then that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to get into argument, or something going to happen, and then that's going to strengthen your belief in those signs. Right? Allahu Akbar. Right? Which can lead to shirk, wallahi. Right? Because Allah, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ilmul ghayb, the knowledge of the unseen. Right? Going to su- back in those days, right? they used to go to soothsayers, fort- fortune tellers. All of it is haram, is forbidden. The Prophet told us right? clearly in the hadith. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and save us. From Tulul Amal, and I'll finish with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, Al Kayisu Mandana Nafsa, who Amila Lima Badal Mot, that the clever person is the one who surpasses his de- desires and works for what is to come after death, while Ajizu Man Atba and Nafsa, who Hawaha, who Tamanna Allah, and the foolish person right, is the one who follows his desires and then has hope, false hope, right, upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And inshallah, we'll explain this hadith further tomorrow and go on to the practical and academic treatments. May Allah Azza wa Jal free our hearts from Al Amal. And tool al-amal and false hope. Ameen. Wa akhru ta'awan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Jazakum Allah khair hasan jazak.